It go I'll be in the front row When it all implodes Second verse Master and now I'm feeling like Steven when he was up in that hospital Nigga shot him nine times, they got him thinking illogical Crippled feeling immortal, we cheated death, he unstoppable We just want that revenge, nigga feel like dying's impossible Microphone check, one, two, one, two, microphone check, one, two, one, two It's me, same nigga I've been for the last 20 years or so, you know the vibes same nigga from the 90s, from the golden era Listen, I'm flawed, I got my issues I know what love is I've grown Ooh. up in a household full of love But I just don't know if I know what it is in regards to I'm flawed to and I have my issues I'm aware of all of them Some of them I like and appreciate <laughs> Really? Some of the shit that the therapist tells me I need to change I like that shit I like that I could just detach And get some of you niggas to fart and fuck away from me I like his talent <laughs> I like that I can say no and not feel I like it Shout out to y'all, man It's all because of y'all It's always been because of y'all And y'all Why don't I know what love is? I'm gonna let this rock And we're gonna talk to these niggas for a minute, man This is a Patreon exclusive The pod is done We're just gonna take a, a few a few Sometimes minutes To discuss some things, early. you know To my dear, dearly departed Shit's becoming all in our fears Here's where it started Seems that nothing's as it appears Where's retarded A millions for niggas not to be America's most Gave, Gave America hope back oh. when the music had a message in it We was rebels against it The best was intended to lessen the gimmick But now um, The boy was talking Yeah man, a lot of pain A lot of pain in the sample <laughs> uh, Shout out to that album uh, That I think Rory is an executive producer on, right? Uh, he was an artistic director I He's think some type of director yeah. He called and wanted some type of credit on that there. Album for the part that he played, and because me and Corey and everybody else involved just never cared. Gear, man, you participated here. Mm -hmm. There was no money to gain from it, right? But here, you worked, and here, mm -hmm. that's the the premise here. That's the theme. That's the commonality. That's the you work and here, you work and here, you work here, here, here. Everybody get what they they deserve. Everybody get what they are owed. Everyone gets what they have coming to them. What's yours is yours. I can't never be mad at what's yours because what's yours is for you. Right. And what's mine is for me. And that will always be the case. Uh, all of those podcasts where we're making the jokes about pocket watching, that was a real thing for me. I don't, I don't. Listen, man, over the last year, there's been some things that have happened on this pod that have been nuts. It's unfortunate that I find myself in the space today to be able to be this transparent with y'all. But that's where we are. I didn't ask for this. Uh, Parks, none of the fellas asked for this. None of us in our wildest dreams could have envisioned that this is where it would be. But if you've heard the podcast today, you heard a Joe Budden level of transparency. Nobody here knew I was coming in here to do that. Uh I have sat long and hard with that decision making for since I last saw these gentlemen mm -hmm. last two times. I saw these gentlemen. I had to think long and hard about every variable, every scenario, every possible outcome and all of the different parties that come into play here. And I felt that I came in here and did what I had to do and being transparent and removing some of the secrecy and some of the covertness and some of the nastiness defending and darkness. Yourself. Defending yourself. Not defending me. I don't care, Parks. It's not yeah. that. It's not that. It's not defending me. I'm protected. I'm protected. It's not defending me. There's nothing that the people can say about me that's worse than the things they've already said about me. <laughs> what I, you've said about I, yourself. <laughs> I speak from that very unique position. I speak from the position of having gained and lost. I speak from the position of seeing friends change. I speak from the position of being robbed, scammed, lied to, and misleaded by everyone in the music business. I view my friends through a different lens. Albeit it may be a jaded lens because this is not everyone's experience. Everybody doesn't turn 21 in the music business and have to deal with all of this bullshit that comes with it. I applaud the people that are able to remain themselves. Mm -hmm. Again, like I always say, I, I applaud the people that are not broken from being broken. Mm -hmm. I applaud the people that find a way. That find a way. Because there's a million ways to not make it. There's a million ways to not succeed. Yeah. But when you make it, God damn it, boy, boy, do you become proud of it. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a feat. Yeah. I am proud of where we sit. I'm proud Me of too. where we are. Me too. And though it may not have seemed like it, it really hurt me to have to do that part. I'm sure. It hurt me to hear it. 
It hurt me to be a part of it. I did try to not do that part. I've tried <laughs> a million different ways to protect people from themselves. Mm. I've tried mad different ways to say, yo, you're going one way, but it's not going to end well. My lawyers are better than yours. You're going to lose. Mm. Stop it. You can't put the tube face back in the tube. Hey, I'm hurt. I'm viewing this differently. Nowhere else in the world could this happen. Hey, stop. What are you doing? Get the energy right. Come back. Mm -hmm. I've begged and I've pleaded with niggas. I'm not forcing nobody to come sit here and be a fucking millionaire. <laughs> Enough of that. I'm not skirting around my career achievements, accomplishments, my successes, the things that have worked here in the last six, seven years. Because these two gentlemen may see it another way. That can't continue to happen. The way that I go about conducting business cannot be affected by people that cannot affect it. And that's what's been going on here for the like last since halfway through the second year that Spotify deal, since the Spotify deal left, since we announced the Patreon deal. It's just been a lot of nasty behind the scenes, slimy accusations of thievery. And questions about shit from niggas who can't question me about shit. And I can't say that because we're friends. And if you don't nip that in the bud, if you don't put a zip on it, if you don't seal it up, it can come back to bite you again. Which is what's been happening. These niggas have been beefing about accounting for three fucking years. There wasn't a dime coming in. Y'all was beefing about accounting. And Spotify, Spotify came and y'all started beefing about accounting. And then Spotify left and you were beefing about accounting. Well, what the fuck does it matter if you don't have final say in any of the accounting? Nothing you say matters in the accounting. I can't say that because we friends and I respect you mm -hmm. and I won't. But don't make me have to say it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All the deals that are signed, unfortunately, are, well, not unfortunately, fortunately, because there's, there's a blessing in it. The beauty in it is everybody gets their rights still. Everybody gets to have their rights. You have to trade something of value to get something of value. So if I'm trying to protect my most valuable asset, which is, which is this podcast, mm -hmm. and I'm loaning my name out, and now my name has contractual obligation to it to get things done so we can still have our freedom and our rights and be protected and make money and do what we're doing because we're killing out of here. Who don't get that plan? You. I get the plan. Anybody know they might just think you're saying it. No, Anybody? No, let me, Corey. Let me, I'll take it a step further. Most in most situations like this, what you would do is take a percentage of everything that they do because you have facilitated a place for them. If, if you sign to another artist, typically what happens is that artist is going to take a piece of everything that you do. Yes. And if not artist and label, if not label, then streamer, if not streamer, whatever, then whatever investor. Whatever the fuck the yes. upper hand is. Yes. You've never done that. To me, or these gentlemen, as far as I know. No, I've never done that. Uh, what I didn't say on the podcast that I think is really important to mention is that, and this is my belief only, please don't think I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, talk down on anyone because I'm not, but I believe at the time of this implosion that these gentlemen had no idea what was in their contract. I believe they didn't read it. I think they negotiated it or had a lawyer negotiate it because you needed to get the whatever needed to come from that. But do I think that they were all the way aware of what their contract said? No. Do I think in their accounting mission, did they find out what the contract said? Yes. And that's where I think a problem comes in. Because mm. if you view what the contract says is bad, you're going to come in here with bad energy. You're going to come in here and not give much effort. You're going to be lazy. You're going to feel the way you're going to build a resentment. Mm. I can't hear you. Oh, hold on. Sorry. I was saying that's not true and um, I would say that because Parks has a contract and Parks is happy with his contract so mm -hmm. I think that when we keep saying contracts and disgruntled people don't get the context that this is a very favorable contract this is a very favorable environment to be in where everybody involved is very happy and has the freedom to voice themselves if they feel any type of way. Like I've seen raises be given out because mm -hmm. somebody felt like they wanted a raise. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've seen unbeknownst to people, they just got raises. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen, you know, this is an open environment. So, you know, if you have somebody that's sitting here that's under a contract that's been with this team for over a decade, when, you know, we laugh about being on the road, staying in Marriott's that cost $69 a night mm. and doing shows in front of 40 and 50 people. Yeah, the Marriott hookup. I remember and, those days. You know, we grinded. Yeah. And now niggas is in the four seasons and niggas ain't got to worry about their rent being paid. You reap or, the fruits of grinding for yeah. so many years. Yeah. And, you know, so you have context, Parks, as to contracts and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is your place of where you live at. Mm -hmm. you, we've been doing this at your place for many years. Mm -hmm. And some of those years, it was thin. Absolutely. Most <laughs> of the years, it was Most thin. Most of the years, it was thin. It was thin. It's thick and, now. Mad seas. And, and and now it's like, <laughs> it's up. Right. And it's up for our friends, too. Mm -hmm. Right, it's up for our colleagues mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. at some point, I think that you lose co context, and I think that sometimes people lose context because of their proximity to other people. Mm. So you know, mm -hmm. yeah. if you don't, if you don't, you know, look at yourself in a position that you play and value it a certain way, you start to lose context, mm -hmm. and you start to look at the next person and feel like, well, you know, maybe. Something's going on that I don't know about. For some reason, those thoughts start to circle in your mind. And it's, it's PTSD. Yeah, instead of instead of coming without without the trauma. But you got to address without it when it comes. Right, you have to address it. Right. When me and Joe had issues, we addressed. And them. we've had issues. Yeah, mm -hmm. we addressed them like men. Right. We addressed. Them. Same. Same with me and Joe. Yeah, like we didn't. I didn't. We didn't. We done it out there. <laughs> yeah. We Uncomfortable talks and, have yeah. to be had sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Harbor feelings for. <laughs> this amount of time and skirt and sneak around and no, I'm calling him. I'm texting him. Mm. He's calling me. He's texting me. Yo, X, Y, and Z. Right. Guess what? Me and Joe were friends before we ever did business mm -hmm. for years. When we stopped doing business, we were friends. Remain friends. Mm. After that. Hey, we had to go do things that we had to do in our lives. Right. We still remain friends. Right. I still wished him the best and wanted to see him do the best that he could do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because see, that's a part that's, that bothers me. That speaks to me as a man. When you choose people to put in your life, it speaks to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the person that you allow in your life, mm -hmm. the people that you spend time with, it speaks to your character. Yeah. So now when you turn around and you have all of these and all of these different feelings and emotions and negative energy is coming out of you and you can't speak to that person that's not speaking to the person it's speaking to you and who mm. you are you know and that's the part that confused me throughout this process was like yo y'all should individually be able to speak correct right and then as a group y'all should be able to speak and speak and that, honestly and that, and that never happened again like I said in the pod neither one of these gentlemen still to this day have said I'm unhappy with something. Mm. I want to renegotiate. I want to make more money. I feel like this is wrong. They just keep being met with their own misunderstandings of things that I assume everyone knows. Mm. And we're not there no more. I've been in relationships with women, uh, with women, romantic, where I would have to say, yo, if I have to stop what I'm doing to check on you every time you feel like something is wrong, and I have to go off your emotional base mm -hmm. and you feel like things are wrong a lot. What that's going to do is it's going to make me have to stop and check on you a lot, mm -hmm. which is going to slow me down. It's a lot of energy. It's going to slow me down. It's a lot of I got to Yeah, I can't. I can't do that. I love yeah. you. Right. And I want to make this work. But I, there's a bigger fish to fry and I yeah. can't slow down. And that's where I am with this, man. I wish I could see it their way. I wish I knew what they were looking at. I wish I knew what they heard in the street or what people are putting in their fucking head. These niggas are going to lose this. They've <laughs> lost this. It's over. You're, you're never viewed the same. Your business is not the same. You're not finding it elsewhere. There's nothing you could do. You're going to sue. You're going to audit. You're going to look foolish in the face. 
because I've been recognized that this is a multi-million dollar thing and it has to be protected as such. It has to be upheld as such. It has to be represented a certain way. I would like them. I would like for the friendship to remain, but I'm with two niggas who clearly say they don't give a fuck about podcasting or the network. Well, our interests are not aligned. Right. And my friends that have nothing to do with podcasting care about podcasting. My because friends I that have nothing to do with podcasting care about podcasts because I'm in podcasting. And these brothers should care just because for me, right, when something works, I continue to do it. Hell yeah. Like, when, when I'm provided solace from somewhere, like, when I see results and progress somewhere, I keep doing it. I know what it's like to do something and not see results and not see progress and fail and be bumping your head against a fucking wall when something works as a creator. God damn it. I'm going that way. When Pump It Up worked, I had seven more fucking up-tempo club dance records to... <laughs> ...do upside the head with before the South took over. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when it works, it works. Yeah. I wish I could spot... The, the the base of their discomfort. Don't tell me it's friendship. I don't give a fuck about that. That's not what moves me in business. Mm. Our friendship is altered. Nigga, friendships get altered. Mm -hmm. Friendships get altered every day. Mm -hmm. Some of my closest friends have moved away, got with a girl, stopped speaking to me, fucking went. The shit fucking happens. Mm -hmm. You're not holding me hostage because of a friendship that existed. Nigga, we can still be friends. Right. Yeah. The fuck? <sighs> and I wish I knew. I knew, wish I knew a way to say it. Some of y'all behind the scenes know I've tried my very best to avoid all of this. I let them back. They spoke their piece. I tried to talk them off a ledge, speak to both of them. What irks me is I have yet to speak to Maul without Rory being present. That... That's, that's, a, problem. that's a problem. I've called Maul a million times, extending the friendship respect card. He never called. He never returned any call or text. Don't tell me about respect. I'm trying to handle you with the respect and the decency that our relationship has called for for as long as I've known you. Somehow you've let this white boy get into your head, and you and that's how you're moving. And I still want. But to roll with him. I still want to talk to Maul. Ne well, me too. Yeah. That's why I called him. Yeah, still want to talk to him. But he didn't answer my call. Instead, he called in. He called whoever he wanted to call. He tried to get his money. I thought it didn't matter about money, but he tried to get his money. Cool. Go ahead. Get it, nigga. Get it. Have a blast. But this behavior, this chemistry, how you're viewed, how you were viewed when you came in. When I was trying to hire Maul to do this, Maul, let me tell you who Maul was. Maul would light up any room that he walked in. Any room and any crowd, it didn't matter, guy or girl, whatever walk of life you came from, Maul would light that fucking room on fire with good energy, positive vibes, laughter, and humor. Mm. That's who Maul is. When Maul joined this podcast, that's who I thought was joining this podcast, and that's who joined. Stories, good times, it was a blast. Somewhere along the line, that changed. People grow up. People want to do things differently. People make some money. Who knows what happened to Maul? But we niggas, so I ain't, I ain't, I don't have it under a microscope. Mm -hmm. I'm not watching it like that. But that don't seem to be who Maul is today. And I respect that as, as someone, as I love him. No doubt. So if that's not who you are today, then cool. But that extra cool shit ain't the best potting, if you're asking me. It don't bode the greatest, if you're asking me. Rory, during all of this sabotage, mutiny shit, was coming around letting me and Corey know that Maul is rolling with him. Yeah. With his chest out. Proud. Yo, what Joe gonna do? Because, uh, <laughs> Maul's with me. Corey can tell you what he said when he heard it. What I said was, guess what? You guessed it. Nigga, keep him. The fuck? Hey, whoever's with you, let them stay with you. I'm not looking for anybody. Mm. But they have to be cool with what comes with staying with you. And from the sound of them last two podcasts, they didn't sound the coolest. They didn't sound like they were at peace with their decision making, their thinking, their thought process, their course of action. They didn't sound at peace with none of it. And I just had to sit here quiet because I love them and maybe it'll help them feel better. Right. And we went on a vacation and they 
before we even came back, the lawyer sent over their lawyer, which is as stupid as I ever heard. The lawyer that came up with all this, which is as stupid as I ever heard. That lawyer sends something over to say, hey, fuck your accountant. We don't believe none of that shit you say. Well, all right, nigga, you're fired. Go check the accounting at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've done, it's been eight weeks. It's been two months. Yeah. Somebody tell me what I was supposed to do. I think I did everything right. I apologized. I took accountability. I did therapy. I let them come back against my business advisors and my financial advisors, against the advice of everybody who loves me. Anybody who loves me, who knows me, who has ears and eyes and a brain, say, Joe, what are you doing? Hmm. What are you doing? Even some of your enemies. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of my enemies. Yeah. I try to be kind and try to be graceful, man. This ain't a two-mile horn. This This is just to say... How extremely disappointed I am that we're here. Me too. But boy, am I proud that we're here. I'm happy we're here. We troubleshot. Yeah. We troubleshot. We got through it seamlessly. Everybody here is okay. I'm okay. The business is okay. The views are okay. The audio is okay. The future business is okay. Everything is okay except for these two niggas. But guess what? Everybody got to be responsible for their own energy, especially when you walk in somebody else's house. We love these brothers. We wish them well. God bless them. But whatever the fuck is going on with them, they got to get it together on their own. Not with me, not with y'all, not with this bad, dark energy. And that's my opinion, not to say that they actually have that. It's just my opinion of what's going on. And that's that, man. They can't continue to come in here and hold the audience hostage, show up one week, not show up one week. Nah, Duke, that ain't how this operation run. You go run your shit like that. I show up. I work. Twice a week Mm -hmm. with the threat of going three and four and five times a week. With Patreon, it probably is three, four, and five times a week. It is. I go, man. When problems occur, I just get to going. I just get back to work. I don't relate to any of this shit, this lazy bullshit. I don't. I don't. It's been six years. Nothing exists outside of here. Don't talk ownership to me. I go too hard, I bust my ass. Headaches, long nights, not seeing my kids, not talking to my family. Don't get me to talking about what comes along with this ownership shit. Anybody want to talk it? It's expensive. Mm-hmm. Very. It is expensive. It's very, very. Hey, we expensive. went on that tour, the second year of the tour at Spotify. At the end of the tour, million dollar tour, know what happened? I had to come out of my pocket and pay Spotify. Hmm. They did nothing during that tour, and I paid them. And showed accounting as to why I'm paying them. Know why? Contracts say year two, you got to pay. Mm. A year two, if y'all go on tour, you got to pay us something because the thinking is we help blow y'all up. Right. It don't matter if they did or didn't. And they did. The branding worked. Yeah, of course. The branding worked. They did. Shout out to Spotify. Salute y'all. It worked. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to pay you niggas. I was in the middle of fighting for a renegotiation. I didn't want to pay them. Know what I did? Pay them. Mm. Owner shit. Got to do it. You can't have the threat of your business in a bad space, the credit of your business, the thinking, the people that deal the bit. Yo, our business is done so great, man. I wish I could tell y'all. I wish I could tell y'all. I don't have to tell you because you see it. I have some idea. (laughs) But I got too much going on for me to have two niggas who I don't believe to know very much about business. Or this business, rather. Not to insult. They might know, but this business, not so much. I'm learning on the fly, too. Mm -hmm. But to have these two brothers come and tell me how this thing is supposed to run, how this thing is supposed to go, and that all the accounting that people provided is fraudulent, and where do these numbers come from? Bitch, where did the check come from that you cashed? Well, stop, because they didn't try to tell you how it's supposed to run. They were unclear about it. Right. Like, so that's a part of it. Right. The communication of what they wanted was never really. Well, no, for years, for years, they've been questioning the accounting behind the scenes of, hey, why'd you pay for that? Why'd you pay for that? Why does he make that? Why does he make that? What's going on? But that goes to you saying that they never asked for a raise. They never asked for a renegotiation. Hey, just say why you're questioning these things. To what end? Yeah, what makes what you I'm, believe this? Where's it coming from? Right. right. We never trying, got that. What are you trying to get out of this? Because mm-hmm. right. if we just get to what you want to get out of this, 
We you, can get somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can get somewhere. I love you. We can expedite things. Right. right. We can get somewhere if we just get to the transparency of what you're getting to by saying, why Why does this cost so much? Why does that cost so much? By question it. Okay, these are the costs, but what are you trying to get to? What do mm-hmm. you want? What do you want? That's a very good point. I think that they think that the Spotify deal was worth a lot more than whatever I reported. Ah. They might think that I'm pulling something else funny with a deal somewhere else and I made like tens of millions of dollars and reported it as one million and pocketed the money. (sighs) That would be the most idiotic thought to have ever. Yeah. And you could think it, but to pursue it. Right. To throw it away off a whim. I come in here all the time and say that I was paid the least from this podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. I went to make my money from elsewhere because I saw what running a business looked like under the Spotify deal. Mm. That shit was expensive. I had to go get some more money. Mm. I had to go do the revolt deal. Mm. I can't see no books over there. I had to do the deal. I'm paid handsomely. Oh, say that again. Love and Hip Hop ain't going to show me no books neither. Say that again. I'm paid handsomely from Love and Hip Hop, but I ain't going to see no books. (laughs) I don't know how they run their fucking business. I'm talent for hire. Guess what? I think I invented that show. I think I helped build that show, create that show. I help. Well, I can think what I want. Guess what? So what? <laughs> you can't see their books. Right. Do no you, one can see the books you at take any the fucking check. job they work at. Tell probably. these niggas that. I know that. And 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 they so fucking whatever they are, they think they emulating me. So they sat in at the worry sat in and said, Well, what's the difference between this and what you did at Complex? Shut up. If you don't know. Should have asked that weeks ago. <laughs> Don't ask it now. If you don't know, you don't know is the point. Mm-hmm. But you got to find out before you bust your move. Because once you bust the move, you can't unbust it. Again, when I come in here and scream on Spotify, I know I'm never going back. Mm. I know it's over. When I come in here and I scream on Complex, that was the end of the road. I knew we was never going back. I was never <laughs> going back. Hey, whatever I'm saying, relationships will be lost. My rep could take a hit. But I'm never going back there. And it's important y'all know it. I wish I knew where they where they sat. I wish I could tell y'all. I wish that I wish that I didn't exhaust all the energy into trying to troubleshoot this. I wish I haven't wasn't so lenient. I don't know where it came from, but they got to go get it together, man. And I'm taking this time out just to communicate that to y'all because it starts and ends with y'all. Joe, you you helped create state of the culture. You created it. Yeah, I co-created that. Me and Puff. You and Puff. Co-created it, started it from day one together. Mm-hmm. And day one was long before day one. We we was working on that show for at least six months before it hit uh, the light of day. Mm-hmm. Did that show? You were getting paid. See the books. Do, do you hit puff? Let me see the books. Let me see any any revenue. Let me see no. who gets paid. Never. Are Never. You questioning who, why somebody gets paid. Never. What they get paid. Never. Hey, let me take it one further than that. One time, Ian Ian thought that he wanted to hit Puff to find out about advertising and what we could work out with the advertising on the show that we helped create. He was going to hit Puff, and they have a relationship. And I hit Ian, and I said, Ian, don't waste your time. Hmm. Save yourself. You don't need to hit him about advertising. The advertising's from Ciroc. 